Sanam. My name is Nam Jyoti Kar, and I am here today to share with you how to teach Kundalini Yoga to Jesus freaks. Four things that you should know. This this is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart because I love Kundalini Yoga, and I am also a Jesus freak. I recognize that the term Jesus freak has some negative connotations, <laughs> even among Christians um, like myself. Um, but I chose the words Jesus freak on purpose because of a lecture that I read by Yogi Bhajan in which he calls himself a Jesus freak. And I thought it was <laughs> really awesome. And without just like quoting it word for word, um, I'll summarize it, but you can find it in the library of teachings if you just look up Jesus Freak. I'm sure it will be what, the first one that pops up. But what happened was someone said to him, you know, Yogi G, don't talk, sir, don't talk to him. He's a Jesus Freak. And so Yogi Bhajan said, well, this is the only type of person I like to talk to. <laughs> Let's go find out the extent of his freaking out. And so he starts talking to this Jesus freak, and it turns out this who whoever he's talking to was actually not very uh, kind or compassionate, or um, he was pretty prejudiced, um, which I know a lot of people think Jesus freaks are. But so Yogi Bhajan starts talking to him and, and essentially showing him <laughs> that he's not a Jesus freak because Jesus freak would see Jesus everywhere. And at one point he just says, "I am Jesus." And the guy's like, what? If you don't see, if I don't look Jesus to you, then you're not a Jesus freak. And he said, like, you know, see that dog going over there? Does that look Jesus to you? And the guy's like, no. He's like, then you're not a Jesus freak. And um, ultimately, the, the, the guy just says, you know, leave me alone. And Yogi Bhajan responded, well, then you're definitely not a Jesus freak because Jesus freaks never leave anyone alone. And I know because I am one. I call people at home at night and say, did you, did you say your evening prayers? And I just love that. Like, I love how, I mean, he was communicating in classic Yogi Bhajan, unique, poke, provoke, and confront style, but always with the intention of, of forklifting and elevating people. And um, so, yeah, I'm a Jesus freak. I see Jesus in just about everyone, and especially Yogi Bhajan. I have a feeling he, he knew Jesus very well, and if anything, knows him even better now. So, so but the point of this video <laughs> is to help you um, sort of navigate and teach some of the people in your life, whether they're in their, your community or in your family, who um, are very devoted to Jesus or devoted Christians um, help you build a bridge with those people because true Jesus freaks will see Jesus in all and especially in these teachings and if they're not there yet don't give up because crazy things can happen <laughs> in a short amount of time especially now that we're in the experience. so the first thing to know is that there are a lot of differences that like it's not cut and dry <laughs> it's not just like Christianity is this there's all these different sects, sects within Christianity I myself am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints also known as Mormons and a lot of Christian sects don't even think that Mormons are Christian <laughs> but just stick with the basics and you'll be fine with any Christian so here's kind of the basics um, and like I said, a true Jesus freak is going to see Jesus in the technology. Quick story, I was in Washington, D.C., and I was meditating with a small group of people at the Lincoln Memorial, and it was really special. It's sort of like a temple in there, but it's loud, you know, it's going to be quiet. Everyone's loud, but we found this quiet little corner, and we, were, we sat down, and we did a healing meditation and even though it was still loud in the place everything just kind of came down a little bit and then when we were all done we opened our eyes we had drawn like a small little crowd of people that were kind of like what are you doing what, what's that and one woman just said you know what religion are y'all and I said 
Well, we actually all were Mormon, but I said, well, this, this technology is for everyone. And she said, you know, I'm a Christian and I just want you to know that Jesus loves you. <laughs> and at that point, I wasn't sure if she's going to tell me to leave all this mumbo jumbo and come be saved. Um, <laughs> but before I could go on, she said, um, she said, yeah, I just walked in and I heard you guys and I thought, Jesus, and I was drawn to you. So she heard Jesus, she felt Jesus in that meditation. And I said, you know, I love Jesus and we're all Christians too. And it was good. And we passed on some information and hooked her up with a teacher where she lived. The point is, is you can make it easier for the Christians in your life by doing a little bit of translating things into their language. So, um, for example, I, I won't go all into how I talk about mantra because I have a whole other video that you can watch on this channel called um, Mantra Meditation Explained for Mormons. And even if they're not Mormon, it's still a good video because it talks kind of about how to, how to explain the sound current to Christians. And, um, but, so, let's say you've explained the sound current. Now you want to give them a mantra. I think that the best mantra to give to Christians is Satanama, the Punch Shabbat. Because, as you know, it translates to birth, life, death or change, and rebirth. And you can easily relate that to the miracle of Jesus Christ, his entire life. His birth was a miracle, his life was a miracle, his sacrifice and death, and then his rebirth through resurrection. And so every time they chant that mantra, they will be reminded of Jesus Christ's birth, his life, his sacrifice, and resurrection. And so I usually get people to start with a simple practice of Kirtan Kriya, and I find that that works really well, and Kirtan Kriya is one of the greats, and it kind of covers everything. So the second thing to know is that um, a hang-up that many Christians might have <laughs> is the Guru Ram Das thing. So we talk about Guru Ram Das a lot in Kundalini Yoga, and and many of the mantras talk about Guru Ram Das. And I usually explain to people that Guru Ram Das was the fourth Sikh Guru, and he was known for healing and miracles. And he's sort of the patron saint of Kundalini Yoga because he was Yogi Bhajan's astral teacher. But when I, I just explain that when we chant the name Guru Ram Das, Guru Ram Das means humble servant of God. And what better example of a humble servant of God do we have than Jesus Christ? He did the will of God in all things. And so, and that's why that woman heard Jesus in the chanting, because there, the house of Guru Ram Das, the energy of Guru Ram Das is the house of Jesus Christ and the energy of Jesus Christ and um, the best thing is just to kind of explain that and then get them to experience it and once they experience it um, you know people who love Jesus will feel Jesus there so remember that humble servant of God Jesus Christ and that's what they're chanting to and they can chant and send that to Jesus so, um, the third thing to know is the idea of um, reincarnation and past lives. A lot of Christians are not on board with this. Um, some of them are. And, it, you know, honestly, the way I get around it or work with it is, like, it doesn't really matter. Like, what matters most is your relationship with God right now in this life and your relationship with your Savior, Jesus Christ. And this technology can bring you closer to that. So I personally uh, believe that I lived before I came here and I'll live after. And a lot of Christians believe that. Some of them don't believe in a pre-earth or pre-mortal life. But the idea of eternal progression, uh, under my beliefs, is more um, the same than different. And I just sort of reserve that, like, who knows, right? <laughs> we'll figure it all out one day. And another way I explain it to people is, you know, it's not a religion. Kundalini Yoga is not a religion, although it's kind of tied in with, with some Eastern philosophy and with the Sikh Dharma, but you don't have to 
do everything, you don't have to take a cold shower, you don't have to like, you know, chant why you do 108 times on your prayer beads every night. You can just pick and choose what works for you. As long as you do the Kriyas exactly as taught by Yogi Bhajan, you don't have to like stop shaving your armpits or whatever I say. Pick and choose what works with you. For your, with your religion, you live that dig even deeper and that's what Yogi Bhajan taught. Dig deeper where you're at. He didn't say to like leave everything and go become a yogi he said add this in you know and so that's usually what I recommend people to do um, so the fourth thing to know about Jesus is and about teaching to Jesus freaks <laughs> is that well we love Jesus because he has this role of the Savior and um, his atonement or at one mint really um, encompasses the whole world and it, he he took on the sins and the sufferings and the pains of everyone in the world in a in, in, and this is actually a yogic power it's with the highest yogic power to be able to burn other people's karma for them Jesus Christ did that for the whole world <laughs> and so we have the opportunity to accept that gift or not okay and uh, I believe that all healing comes through the atonement and through Jesus Christ, even if we don't know that's where it's coming from. And so some people, let's say they're experimenting and trying this out, and they're experiencing huge shifts, and they're like, how come I didn't experience huge shifts with prayer and, you know, studying the Bible, and, and what, you know, it's, it's a little disconcerting, but... What I explain is it all comes through Jesus Christ, but um, I like to explain the subconscious mind because I am a hypnotherapist and I see that the subconscious mind is everything. And what we're really doing in Kundalini Yoga is we're cleaning the subconscious mind. And the mind isn't here. It's sort of in, we don't really know where the mind is, but um, I believe that it's sort of nexus is at the heart. And if we don't regularly clean the subconscious mind, our hearts can become hard. And that terminology will be very familiar to a Christian. They talk the Bible and the Book of Mormon and other Christian stuff talks about having a hard heart and letting Christ take out your stony heart and replace it with a heart of flesh. And so what I explain is that Kundalini Yoga technology helps crack open our hearts so that we can access that healing power that's always been there but unfortunately like we've been subconsciously blocking it it's, it's hard to explain that to people when they really want healing but yet you tell them that they're actually blocking it and that's all I just say you know like there's this whole subconscious pile of garbage that you didn't even know was there some of it's generational some of it's from your ancestors but with this technology, which came from God through the house of Guru Ram Das, which is really the house of Jesus Christ, it'll just help you even better to give your heart to Jesus. And that's the four things that you should know. Um, and it's, it works, and it's true. And I think that's the most important thing, is that like this technology works. And thousands of my students have felt the healing power of the atonement more powerfully because of Kundalini Yoga. It doesn't have to draw you away from your your faith and from your religion. And I have a whole other video on organized religion um, because yes, it was Piscean because we were in the Piscean age, but now that we're in the Aquarian age, organized religion is changing too. Um, one more thing. And this is, I occasionally get the question from students about the mantra satna. Some, of, some people think it sounds like Satan. <laughs> and that's really, it's a really interesting one. So if you break down Satan as a mantra, it's actually a really horrible mantra because it's got four of the five primal sounds. It's got the s, t, n, and the ah, but it doesn't have the m, the ma. It doesn't have ma, which is rebirth. So the, the mantra Satan takes you from birth, life, death, and then nothing. <laughs> Ends in death, which is a perfect mantra for what, which is a perfect name for Satan and what he represents and what 
you know, the concept of Satan, which we understand in the yogic technology as the illusion, as Maya. So, yeah, just to explain to people that uh, Satnam includes the rebirth, and that's the true identity, is to elevate and be reborn. And that's what happens when the Kundalini rises, is we merge with our true self. So I hope this helps, and I hope that you can be an instrument and a bridge and um, bringing people, just bridging the gap with other devoted souls in your life and showing them that we're all on the same team, you know? And it's Jesus' team. Jesus was on that team too, bringing people to God um, and to love, because God is love. I just, I pray, and I offer this from my heart. Uh -huh.